Let's talk now about the strategy that combines some of the features of broad differentiation, low-cost provider, focused differentiation, and focused low-cost in what's called the best cost provider strategy. That is uh, oftentimes a more mature market and where many companies ultimately end up by trying to be doing both differentiation and low cost management. Um, in some ways, as we'll talk about, it provides some, you get pressure from all sides, but on the other hand, you're in a relatively defensible position. Essentially, Best cost provider means that you're, you're, it's a hybrid between differentiating your product. So there's some features and functions that, that you can offer that other people can't, and they ask for your product or they recognize your brand or they want your product for whatever features. But at the same cost, you're, at the same time, you're able to develop those products and distribute them at a low cost. And so you're able to offer a reasonably, a reasonable price that can be, can provide both differentiated value and reasonable price and so you from your customers perspective they can get your product which might not be the slickest in the market but it's close and they can get that for a price that allows them to say I'm going to go with this one instead of the real high premium product and that's your best cost provider approach it goes after the value conscious buyer um, in the life cycle of products as products mature, more and more customers enter the marketplace that were marginal. They didn't necessarily jump on it when it was fashionable, but now everyone has one and they want an iPhone or whatever. They tend to become more value conscious and look to shop for something that is good, has the features, but isn't the most expensive. And so later on in a cycle, oftentimes you will see a marketplace that fills up with these kind of buyers and that opens up the door for the best cost provider strategy. It's essentially this hybrid. It allows for features and functions that you offer that other people don't, but you offer them at a price that people feel that they're getting a good deal. It's a, it's not, they're not paying a premium for it. They're getting good value for their money. And that's really what your strategic um, storyline is in your, your market messaging and the like. Do you offer best value, high value, best cost, best value? This is, works when there's a lot of differentiation in the market. You have a lot of brands that people sell. Um, some are extremely expensive and some are less expensive. Um, you could come in and offer something that people say, oh, that's good enough, and by the way, it's at a good price. Um, typically, a large number of buyers, which as I said, oftentimes is later in a market cycle when people start to know about these products and services being out there, but they weren't the early adopters. They weren't the fashionable people that had it first. But now they, everyone has one, so they want one. They tend to be more value conscious. Um, and this oftentimes this opens up this competitive space where these people are willing to buy. They want the features that are cool. They want a smartphone with all the features, but they don't necessarily need to buy an Apple, if you will. Um, and also, if the marketplace, if the economic conditions are such that people are watching their budgets a little bit, that also adds to the possibility of the best cost provider strategy. So when you think about it, what this essentially means is that you're, you're differentiating your product, but the competition at the high end is very hard, so you have to compete also on price, but you do it by providing a price that people feel is valuable for the products and services they get. So that puts you right in the middle of pressure between differentiated product people the high-end folks, and the very low-cost people trying to sell your product. You don't want to offer it in Walmart. That's where the low-cost people are. You, don't, you can't sell it in your own boutique. Um, you're trying to sell it in a high-end store, maybe. You try to get your, your product being sold in like a, a Neiman Marcus or, or other kind of store like that, um, where you're... They go in, all the brands are expensive, your brand is the least expensive, but it's still a nice brand and people buy it. But of course the differentiators are going to try and come after you if you're successful. And of course you always have the low cost people where people just sort of say, I can't even afford this, I can't even afford your product, I go to Walmart and buy the product there. So you get pressure from both ends and that's why it's a risky business, it's a risky strategy in the long term, 
but oftentimes that's where a lot of people end up competing over time. So that's the way to think about it. In our last lecture in this module, we'll review these various strategies, and I'll give you some sense as to how you can think about the pieces of the strategy and where your business might fit, where competitors might fit. And the mo one of the most important things is to realize is as you develop a strategy is that you focus on a strategy, a, a particular approach to the market and not a mishmash of possible approaches because that leaves you open to competitors who come in with a really single-minded <clears throat> single plan to take market share and to increase their profits. So we'll talk about that in the next lecture.